Welcome back friends, this is MDog, and we're going to do a crazier experiment this time. Uh, last time you may have seen the video, it was actually a stream, but you know, we, we cut up that stream, that part of the stream, and, and uh, sent it out into the YouTube world, where we featured this as if, uh, you know, what would it be like to use this as the starting setup? If you're coming to Norway, you don't want to spend much silver, because you just want to see like, okay, can I make some silver and earn a little bit just using a very inexpensive setup? So we ended up with the Saltmaster Inshore 92, uh, but for a reel, which is sort of the more interesting part, we started off with the Narga C uh, dash LW30, which is max drag 10 kilo. I will say it actually worked pretty well, pretty exciting. Um, but it, it left me thinking like, okay, can we go even cheaper? And I'll show you um, the real cost here. So if you look at conventional, the one we were using there was this one, right? That's 1800 silver, almost 1900. The very cheapest I can imagine doing is this one for conventional reel, the winter trolling 30. I'm excited about trying this, all right? So it still has a pretty decent uh, line capacity. So we'll have to check. So at point, at point two five, it still would be worth going 600 meters. Although I think we may do a cheaper line option because we want to really go cheap here. We'll see. All right. So, um, 778 silver. Let's do it. 7.3 max drag, right? So we're going to still use the inshore. This is still, I mean, this is such a cheap, um, a cheap rod, but we're going to have to do a different uh, line and leader here. So I'm thinking, even though we don't know, I think we're going to hope that the mech weight of this, even though the max drag is 7.3, we're going to hope that the mech weight puts us more like around 20. So we've got a 22.5. We may just have to go with that, but let me see what the other options are. If there are other options, let's see, we need a shock leader. So let's look at the uh, shock leaders. Eighteen is probably safer. Eighteen is probably safer. We could take a chance and go 22.5 and just hope we don't snap, break the reel. I don't really know if I'm being honest. 18 is safer. Uh, it's only four and a half kilos. All right, let's try 18. All right, so if we're putting an 18 liter, we want about 20 kilos of line uh, 20 kilo strength line right just a little bit more so like this so this is what i'm thinking so if we put if we put this kind of braid so it's not saltwater braid but it's, it's probably something you already have in your inventory you know like this is really cheap like at this point you're hardly spending anything to start fishing here uh in norway but this is 22.8 It technically could get, I'm sorry, this is 28 millimeter. It could technically get a lot more line on there. So we're really gimping ourselves by not going with, um, we don't have lines, no. By not going with something that's at least 600 meters. What is the cheapest 600 meter option? three hundred sixty nine silver and we could go with 18 which is exactly but that diameter is bigger because it's mono and not braid so 
technically you probably won't braid to get more line on there. And if we go 600 meter on this, the cheapest 600 meter is this. So it's basically 400 silver. It might be worth doing it. So, okay, so what's the difference in that and then just going full on 600 rainbow? 436, there almost isn't a difference. So I guess we do it. I guess we do it. I was going to, I mean, I, I really feel like the way you're going to be fishing with this in this type of experiment, you really don't need the rainbow line to be able to see the depth you're fishing at. It's not that important. Um, all right. So what type of uh, lures are we using? We're probably using uh, maggots and, you know, um, so these are like four. These cost like four a piece, right? Try green, black, red, white. Um, if you have homemade rubber fish, use those two, of course. All right, so this is the setup. I mean, this is so risky, right? Um, now, one thing you could do is you could fish from shore with this. I actually have no idea. I'm going to have to do another video sometime of um, how what the bite rate is like, like how this goes fishing from sh fishing from shore. Oh, start a happy hour. It's such a bummer. Um, is that still falling actually? I think it is. Um, but this is something you could do. Just kind of let it fall. See if you get a bite. Um, and then we could, you know, per try to jig or perk it back. I just don't know. I haven't done enough experimentation with this. What we, what we really want to do is take this out on the, um, so we've got 560 meters on there now. Take this out on the uh, boat. And I guess we will do that. Let's try to see. Again, things I haven't really tried before. So I have no idea how good this could or could not be, but we did get the jig step going. So I'd say there's at least a chance. There might be some better places to fish from shore. Uh, this is just the one spot I've tried before. We're maintaining that jig step for what it's worth. I don't mind that we're doing through happy hour. Actually, we've had some amazing happy hours lately. All right. So we lost jig step. All right, let's get it. Let's get out on the boat and let's really look and see. I mean, we're going to go straight to the 34 meter hole. Obviously what you want to do with this kind of setup, um, is target small stuff at the 34 meter hole. So we'll try the, uh, we'll, we'll start with maggots because everyone may not have the homemade rubber fish although it's so easy to level up lure making just to the point of getting those that I, I think it's you know it's not unreasonable to think that people would have those um, pretty cool orders oof rough place for the boat to be well rough direction for the boat to be in is what I meant to say all right, so let's get out to 34. You know, had somebody asked me on the last video or last, yeah, video we did that was like this one, you know, where we're trying to fish with like a really inexpensive starter setup. And they said, well, what would you recommend for a spinning reel? Starting out spinning reel. Um, and, and I guess to be clear, like I'm kind of making this tongue in cheek. Like I don't actually think I would recommend anyone put this kind of setup together unless it just looks fun to you. It's cheap enough that um, 
it's no big no big loss. I mean, if you actually want to know what I would recommend uh, in terms of a spinning reel setup to start here, then um, I would say it's possible if you target really small fish, you could start off with like a caliber HSV. Um, that's definitely on the small side. You're going to run into fish you can't get in, but like that would be possible. Um, the, the smallest setup I've used out here, uh, is the, oh, I must have it on my, on the, the light boat rod. Yeah. Is the Taiga C. Um, that's a conventional reel, but you know, that's kind of the smallest I've used. Um, when I'm tar when I was targeting really small fish, I would fish out here with the Taiga C. Um, but that's nowhere near as pathetic small as something like this is. Um, but so I guess the spinning equivalent to that, you know, Taiga C gets to 15.4 drag. So is the, um, Oh, my caliber must be on one of my carp rods. I think it's on one of my Fortuna carp rods. Yeah, like right here. So this is kind of like, I mean, it's it's not quite as good as the Taiga C, but it's in the same ballpark that you could say, okay, well, could this be a starter if you're really targeting small fish? Yeah, you might could get away with that. You're not going to have it be quite that big you're probably going going for more like 27 liter or something like that so i mean in terms of spinning like i might look at something like that at the very minimum but if you have something higher than the caliber hsv then obviously that's going to be a lot of people started here with vingas you know as their spinning spinning reel i use the tagara 8,000 a good bit when I first started fishing here. Um, for, again, for sort of like a small to mid-size setup. All right, we're just going to 34 and we're going to try different lures and we'll just see how this feels. Uh, the, the question is like, what fish can you get, get in? What fish can you not get in with an 18 kilo leader on a 7.3 max drag express fishing when winter trolling? I mean, Obviously, I don't recommend anyone actually do this. We're actually using a reel that has less power than some of the ultralight reels that I have and other people have. I mean, this is this is no way this is a good idea, but it's fun. The winter trolling 700 700 silver reel here in Norway. And we're just going to do jigging. I think pilker uh, pilker I mean, maybe you could do like the smallest size lures for pilker, pilker lures and get away with it. But I think starting out with jigging setups on small stuff like this is probably the way to go. All right. So friction break. I don't know. We'll start with 20. No, nah, let's start with 18. And uh, we're just going to let this sink to the bottom and then we're going to see what we catch and see how we get them in. Very nervous right now. It's going to be interesting. Doesn't usually take this long to get a bite at 34. Although I'm so used to using drop shots and all the attract, uh, all the crazy stuff on there, not just one simple setup like this. All right, maybe we need to try um, a different color. Maggot?
Well, I was really nervous. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, we're fine. All right. Let's go ahead and reel this up. Let's try one more maggot before we actually switch to the handmade lures. I mean, I know the handmade foam works really well, but unless things have really changed, these maggots were working pretty good too. Let's try the black one. Before we start perking, I was trying to see if we get a jig step going, but it's not happening. We're going to have to move to, ooh. Okay. I'm going to say we're going to have to move to the 41. There we go. All right. So what's the first fish on little black maggot? Okay. 188 gram. Felt like we had a, that felt like we had about a five kilo safe on. We have 188 gram. It's going to be, it's going to be a fun time. I can tell already. All right, let's try a, uh, a blue handmade. Get that friction break down a little bit. Uh oh. Okay, we stopped the run and I think we pretty safely brought it in here. There we go, 1.2 kilo Pollock. All right, we're, we're in the positive now. All right, I think we're just gonna switch, switch lures every fish. Just to kinda see how different colors, different lure types are working. Especially these handmade foams, like all of these should work pretty well. Two marker fish right out of the bat. All right, we're at 29. All right, I'm gonna lock it for a minute here. This is really dangerous. Obviously we could snap the leader here, but I just wanna see how much pressure is this really putting on us. Also wanna test out this reel. Can it go over into that, like towards that 18 kilos of pressure without just actually falling apart? Yeah, looks like it can. It did not just fall apart. But it's really dangerous to do this, especially something as low quality as this reel is. All right, 
That was a 3.8. Okay. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine, he said. Okay. All right, we switch to the green foam. Okay, nice and small. That's the way it's gotta be. Okay. Oh wait, we're switching every fish. All right, so let's go to red. I mean, if you don't, you know, if you don't lose too many liters, these lures are so cheap, but if you don't lose too many jig heads, you would be able to make up the money that you spent on this cheap little reel pretty quick. So it's not like the most unreasonable thing. Oh, almost forgot. All right, we're going yellow now. Um, do strips this time. Okay, we're just chilling out Norwegian Sea, having a good time. Using our ultralight setup without getting credit for ultralight. There we go, there we go. All right, what else can we try? How about a classic shad 3005 I mean let's just let's just experiment while we're while we're getting crazy let's just really get crazy I have never used this lure on the salt in the salt water on the Norwegian Sea might not work at all who knows I don't think we really want to be, you know, at nighttime, we probably, we just don't want to catch cusk on this thing. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, it ran too. All right. I mean, Right now, we are successfully catching the size fish that our setup can handle. Now, that won't always be the case. But right now, that is the case. Five hundred sixty gram place. That's cool that that, uh, that that classic shad caught that. All right. How about the minnow, the lens minnow 
number 8008. Let's do it. I like the color of this lure. And we're just perking it right at the bottom. Gonna lock it up and go for it. Again, do what I say, not what I do here, chat. This is foolish, foolishness on this cheap of gear. But I want to put this through the through the ringer a little bit. Really see what see what it can do a little bit on this smaller size stuff. Hey, that's a nice place. And we got marine fishing points. <laughs> okay. I mean, we might need to come back to this lure. That's a nice catch on that minnow. I had a feeling about that thing. All right, look at this lens twister. How cool does that look? Let's try this out. It's kind of like what we're seeing here is, um, especially on these soft lures, jigging these soft lures, a lot of stuff works well out here. Trying to start friction break 20 every time just so that we like kind of get a sense of as we climb the friction break, we see how the fish feels and looks. Just popped right off. Not this time. It's small though. This can be one of those sculpin or something, right? Tiny one. Ooh, it's another eel pal. Okay. It's not bad. Um, all right, how about the how about a hot pink one? So same lure, lens twister, but this one is a seventy oh oh two. Uh, we need to reposition, I guess. Get back up on the bank. We'll see if where how deep this settles. Uh, it's still pretty good, at least for now. See if we can get something real quick before we fall off the edge here. They feeling a little nervous about this hot pink color. We're 
barely still on the bottom. Right, just another minute here and then we'll switch lures we've given this one a good effort definitely seems a lot slower than anything else we've used recently probably would eventually get a courtesy fish but I don't want to wait too long plus we're, we're getting on that edge I think of the bank all right Let's go ahead and pull that one in. All right, we'll switch to, um, ooh, the 09 looks good. Let's try the, let's try the white maggot though. I'm gonna go a little north here. Not too far, the tide might be changing. That should be good. I guess we should look and see what the um, what the test is on this reel. I didn't even notice. From 58 grams. We are so far under the gram test, but it doesn't matter because we're just tossing it right off the side in front of us, right? Mm. Now we got to count the jig head. So we, we're actually at 38 grams. We're still under test, but not by as far as I was thinking for a second there. All right, real quick bite on the maggot. Small, but quick bite. It's the white maggot. All right, sculpin. Anything that's real experimental we could try. Like the quicker, the smaller ones maybe? The, four, uh, the 406 or the five or the four or the pink. Pink works good out here sometimes. The tiny fishes have been working good out here. Uh, let's try the tiny fish. Let's try the one. And I think maybe the larger tiny fish, aren't there two sizes? Yeah, these are four gram. These might have been even, even working even better, which we can try that in just a minute. Oof. Okay. We didn't have it down on, um, we didn't have it down on 20 that time. Started at 26 or something, friction break. Ooh, look at him diving on us. Just paused for a second. Whoa, whoa, we almost lost control there. All right, 2.7 kilo. All right, let's go to the larger tiny fish. Here we go. So these are the four grams. Let's go to the uh, the white one, whitish one. All right, another little safe there. Not bad. Start down on 20 for sure. Playing with fire a little bit more, doubling the size of the lure. It's getting to be cusk time too. All kinds of reasons why this might be a bad idea notwithstanding the fact that we're using such a such a puny little reel why aren't we getting
There we go. I don't know why we weren't getting perking so long. Oh, we're still not keeping it. Let's see. Okay. I like it. I like it. I mean, I do have to admit, it's a very fun little setup. Again, I don't recommend anyone actually do this, but you know, if it looks fun to you, it is, you know, it is something that, uh, look at that sculpin. That's a nice size sculpin. It is something that you can do, I suppose. Um, so here's the pink quicker and it's the bigger one too. Oh man, this green quicker. I don't know. Let's try a pink first. And before we completely wrap up, let's um, let's just throw on like a small, uh, a small lure, just just see how things go, you know. Might as well. One thing that doing this has uh, reinforced, for me at least, is, man, there's a lot more, especially with these soft lures jigging, there's a lot more lures than I realize or that I think about that actually probably work really well out here, and I've hardly tried any of them. All these lures, I mean, these lures cost like, most of them are like four silver a piece, something like that. We're catching, you know, good little fish out here on them. Not this one so much, by the way. This is the second pink. So there are some pink pilker lures that work really good. But so far, the pink soft baits, not so much. I think we'll go ahead and pull this up. Let's don't waste any more time on this worth experimenting for that but i'm just not feeling the pink on these soft lures soft baits for some reason okay so this has all been marine lure jigging rig right as long as you've unlocked jigging and spin fishing you've unlocked this even if you've never fished on the sea before but let's go back to the very beginning thing you start with which is the pilker rig and we'll go with the bond 7005 uh, that and the Jigmeister, these two are probably, and the 7006 and the 01 for that matter, but sort of these three are probably my three favorite of these tiny, really small pilker lures. Um, and we could do this kind of stuff, but we're, I won't do that because most people, if you're, you know, just getting to, um, Norway, you're not going to have all that unlocked. So that, that would get... I don't know. I'd rather just see what can we do just with the lure. Now I will put this on here because I'm assuming most people have a, you know, gotten bait harvesting high enough to be able to cut up mackerel and safe and debate. And that does help with our bite rate a little bit. So I think it's worth having that on there. Ooh, let's go to 20. Man, we are actually, the weight of pulling this 70 gram lure like we need our friction brake on like 24, not to just like jerk the lure. I mean the line out just with the size of the lure and the mackerel together. So that's what 85, what's the test range? It's 185. I guess it's just the, how weak this reel is. It's causing all kinds of issues. So, so far, this doesn't seem like it's as good a bite rate as the, um, you know, some of the better soft baits seem to be. But 
Oh, look at that. Dragging again. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to put it on 25. Might be time of day a little bit, too. I don't think we're sitting on the bottom. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey, we just put some real pressure on this reel and it's still surviving, still okay. All right, we don't we don't want to let this fish run too far if possible, but we you know, we'll try not to snap the reel. All right, so this is a great test. First of all, notice that we put a pilker lure in the water. Nighttime, this could be a cusk, for example, but we immediately get a fish that's a little bit out of our size range, right? Um, and just to be honest, like, you want to try to avoid this type of fishing on the Norwegian Sea. If you're new to the Norwegian Sea, like you really want to try to target fish that you can efficiently get in pretty quick. Because so much of what you catch out here is actually worth really good silver. So why not just efficiently catch stuff that you can get in pretty quickly? And... Uh, and avoid situations like this in all seriousness but it is kind of fun on this setup to see what we've got so we really are putting a lot of pressure on this reel when i lock it up like that and it gets into the red i mean that's you are feeling the full you know close to that full 18 kilos of pressure and this little reel so far hasn't busted i mean of course it could at any minute next time i lock it could be the time it busts but then the other thing we want to do is after we resolve this fish one way or another, let's check and see. Let's just check right now real quick. Okay. 0.3 wear on line guides. Besides that, no wear at all. Um, actually, I was looking at the rod, not the reel. My fault. So we've got a little bit of wear. Although, you know, by the way, this got really cheap grease on it. But the reel is so cheap, it's probably not worth putting expensive grease on it, but that is going to cause things to wear faster. He's still got a lot of bounce to his step. The fish does. Let's see if we can just... We did get him pulled in some. We may end up popping the leader here though. Got it to 15. I think we're going to get this fish in as long as I don't pop the leader one of these times. We're right at 10 to 15. See if we can get it down to 5. There we go. All right, I've got to turn the brake down. We got to hope for the best here. All right. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I know 3.7 looks pretty weak, but as you know, if you fished here a lot, because of the shape, these turbot are not easy to get in. 
That's a pretty good catch for us on, on this particular setup. I have to say, I feel pretty good about that. All right, what is the jig? So the Jigmeister is 75 gram. It's five, five grams more. Um, but just to live on the edge, we'll, we'll cast this one time as well. I want to see. I think we'll have to increase the friction break if we want to, you know, perk it without ripping our line out the reel. But I just want to double check that again. Oh man, that was the uh, that was the riskiest fish we've caught yet. That was fun though. Uh, just a blast to fish with something this size. Although you just got to have a tolerance because you're gonna get absolutely blown up sometimes, right? Okay, so if I if I if I perk it without hitting shift, if I just right click perk, right click perk, it does not pull line out of the reel. We're fine leaving it at twenty. Now the thing we are running into right now is so few fish are going to be very active at night. The chances of us getting a cusk that's going to be next to impossible to get in just increase, increases significantly. So again, we're using this Jigmeister 75. I love this little lure. All the Jigmeisters are great. But let's see what we can do with it. Okay, there's a fish. Ooh, lucky. Very fortunate. All right. Perfect size. What do we want this to be? Like a place or something? I mean, there's not much it could be this small that would actually be worth much, but we'll take it. Oh, it's a little haddock. Whatevs. Just a little haddock, right? All right. Uh, we'll, let's catch one more fish and then we'll just call it a day. We'll call it a day on the Express Fishing Express Fishing win, Winter Trolling 30 experiment. Can we survive the last fish of the experiment? Putting it up 23 so we don't pull line out. Oop, there we go. Hey, we made it. We survived. Good job, everyone. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I mean, this is just a fun experiment, right? Let me know what you think. Has this been fun? Living on the edge? Testing some things out? Okay, if we're getting into sharks, we're definitely going to wrap this up. Let me know what you think. Do you want to see more videos like this? Uh, do you have other ideas? Other, you know, I feel like we've kind of, I mean, I, what's the point of testing a reel any smaller than this? There's no point. We're not going to do that. But are there other things we could test? For sure. Um, I, I wouldn't mind. Maybe maybe this series turns into we start testing, um, you know, some of the other, like, what if we test using a fillet jigging rig on um probably not a setup this small but you know maybe one just a little bit bigger than this test out the fillet jigging rig see what kind of um like for example here let's just let's do a little teaser okay let's set it up like we had it before which let me see if i can remember it should be is it 30 kilos and we had it 27 um, and then we want to do two ot, and then we want to do the fillet strip mackerel. Okay, so this was the setup from last time, right? All right, well, what happens if we put this fillet jigging rig? Uh, to finish my thought was just, you know, what if we go down the different types of rigs and try out those different types of rigs on small to medium setups? And then later we could do it on big setups. I don't know. Just trying to get some ideas, some fun things we could try here in the Norwegian Sea. If you have other ideas, though, let me know. Would love to hear about it. So when we're using this jigging rig like this, we're actually just, for, for the beginning at least, we're actually just going to let it sit in that bottom layer. So we've just got that strip of mackerel 
on the jig hook, just teasing those fish down there, hoping something will come along. Now, if you're not getting a bite rate, you can start to perk it just like you would a perking lure. But initially, I always like to just let it sit for a minute. See if you can get a reasonable bite rate without touching it at all and just letting it sit in that bottom layer. Sometimes you can. And if you can, then it's sort of like you're bottom fishing, right? Um, which means you can be, you know, watching something, taking care of something else, and just sort of watching your screen, making sure you don't have a fish on. Okay, so, I mean, part of this is it's middle of the night. I think if this was daytime, not that we'd be, like, constantly catching fish, but I think it'd probably be pretty good. But it is middle of the night, so let's start perking this just a little bit. Or jig stepping, whatever. Just give it some movement. All right, fish on. And pretty small, but we'll take it. Hey, a little eel pout, very little eel pout. So anyway, you know, again, uh, just ideas for different things we could try. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, it's been fascinating. I'll, I'll say this as a parting shot. You know, even during my stream today, a lot of people were sharing, like, as they have first come to Norway, the setup that they decided to use first. And there's so many, there's so much variety, so many different types of reels and rod combinations. So it's pretty cool that there's not just like a one obvious choice, but that according to how, how much silver you want to spend and all that, like there's a lot of different ways to approach fishing at this new map. So, all right, as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Y'all are the best community ever. Tight lines and I will see you next time.